It's a big year for gaming hardware. Nvidia's new Ampere graphics cards are finally here. AMD has its own lineup on the way, and the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are just around the corner. So if you're looking to upgrade, you've got a tough choice to make. But if Nvidia's new cards are any indication of where PC gaming is headed, consoles won't be gaining an edge anytime soon. There's a lot that we still don't know about the upcoming hardware, but NVIDIA's confirmed specs give us a lot to go on. The GeForce RTX 3080 looks to be a pretty big step forward from last generation, at least if NVIDIA's marketing materials are to be believed. Raw shader performance, ray tracing capabilities, and tensor-based AI are all getting significant boosts. Couple that with 10 gigabytes of fast GDDR6 memory, and NVIDIA claims it has twice the relative performance of the RTX 2080, able to hit not just 60 frames per second at 4K, but to do so with RTX on. And granted, that's with the assistance of DLSS, that's Deep Learning Super Sampling, NVIDIA's AI tech that helps to boost frame rates and graphically intensive workloads. But if more games start supporting that technology, real-time ray tracing might actually be worthwhile. Now that performance comes at a price though. At $699, give or take, depending on which variant you buy, 3080 is priced similar to its predecessor, but still roughly double the cost of your typical console. Granted, we don't know how much the PS5 and Xbox Series X cost just yet, but if they're anywhere near what we've seen in previous generations, your wallet will take a noticeably bigger hit for the latest and greatest in PC gaming. Now, the slightly more affordable RTX 3070 also boosts performance over its predecessor, with Nvidia claiming it to be on par or even faster than the current gen RTX 2080 Ti, which is basically the reigning champ of consumer GPUs right now. And at $499, this card should be able to handle high refresh rate gaming at 1440p or 60 FPS at 4K, though probably not with ray tracing as well. Meanwhile, the RTX 3090 comes with top tier compute performance that Nvidia claims will be able to play games at 60 frames per second in 8K resolution. That's right, 8K. That monster of a card has 24 gigs of GDDR6 memory, an enormous cooler, and a $1,500 price tag. But hey, if you've got the money to afford a giant 8K TV that Nvidia wants you to play on, what's another $1,500 for a graphics card? Now, comparing these cards to the next generation of consoles isn't exactly easy, given the sparse details that we have about the PS5 and Xbox Series X, not to mention the still upcoming AMD RDNA 2 architecture, which will be used in both consoles. Comparing two different architectures is a bit like comparing apples and oranges, and with so many details still under wraps, it's like the oranges are wearing invisibility clicks. We do know, however, that Nvidia is boasting 30 shader teraflops of compute power on the RTX 3080, and 20 shader teraflops on the RTX 3070, without including the separate RT and Tensor cores that are used for ray tracing and AI computations. The PS5 and Xbox Series X are advertising 10.28 and 12 teraflops respectively, and those also don't include the extra ray tracing hardware that we know both consoles will have. That's still a pretty huge gap, especially considering that the PS5 will downclock from that ideal value when power consumption is at its limit. Those values also don't take into account the fact that the consoles are using an APU rather than a separate CPU, which means that they'll have to share resources in a way that NVIDIA's dedicated GPUs just won't have to. Now keep in mind that teraflops are a very imperfect point of comparison, particularly between different architectures like NVIDIA's Ampere architecture and the upcoming consoles AMD RDNA 2. So while we can't simply say that the RTX 3080 has three times the real-world performance of the PS5, it is pretty clear that these GPUs aren't going to give the consoles a leg up anytime soon. PC gaming will likely continue to offer more power than Sony and Microsoft's dedicated machines, provided that you have cash to burn. Now, even if the consoles could hit 4K at 60 FPS like the RTX 3080, and that's a big if, both solutions will likely be using upscaling tricks like DLSS in order to reach those benchmarks. In the end though, the difference could come down to just how well the various hardware solutions handle things like ray tracing, upscaling, and other AI-based rendering. And if the pass is any indication, one solution's 4K 60fps could be a much blurrier artifact-laden mess than another's. Now ultimately, raw power is only one part of the equation. You also have to consider exclusive games, multiplayer platforms, and your preferred control scheme. Console and PC gamers have also deviated in how they use the power afforded to them. PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X aimed for 4K at 30 FPS in most games, but many PC users find higher frame rates more beneficial than higher pixel counts. If you're still on the fence between a PC upgrade or a shiny new console, just keep waiting. Not only are NVIDIA's mid-range Ampere GPUs still on the horizon, 
We also have new cards from AMD expected sometime soon as well. And there's only so much all these marketing numbers can truly tell you about how a game runs. It's better to see all that fidelity and frame rate in the flesh to know which move is right for you. For more on NVIDIA's new GPUs, keep it right here at IGN.